Hello, my name is Sally Pinto, and I'm the program director for the Yonkers Nork Neighborhood Naturally Occurring Retirement Community. We serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We are under the auspices of WJCS and the Yonkers Office for the Aging. We also have a resource specialist and a nurse on staff. We conduct virtual programming when partnership with the Yonkers Public Library on a daily basis. Enjoy the program. Um, so as always, any additional props that you want. So it can be like yoga props if you have blankets and bolsters and blocks, or you can be creative with the stuff around you and use pillows or blankets or a rolled up towel. Um, so think about props as just kind of wanting to fill in the space between your body and the floor so that you way you can kind of fully release and relax into whatever shape we're working on at that moment. So we're going to get started seated today and you can sit up on a pillow or a blanket. And if it feels okay, we're actually going to start with, um, the soles of our feet together and the knees wide, but don't feel like you have to go there right away. Kind of just start to check in with your body. And then using the next few moments to start to bring yourself into that butterfly leg position. And I always encourage the use of props, but I don't want you to just automatically slide stuff right underneath your knees right away. Kind of allow your body to rest into it. And then if you notice that it's hard to let go, that's where you're gonna start to just kind of fill this empty space between the floor and your knees or your thighs. You can allow the hands to rest wherever you like. The feet can be as close to you or as far away from you as you want. It's going to change the sensations a little bit. So feel free to play and then find a place to pause. Sitting up nice and tall. You can close your eyes or just soften through the gaze. I'm just beginning to check in and tune in with your body and your breath. You can let your head be wherever is comfortable. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. Relax the jaw. And just take a few more breaths here.
And just one more breath. You're welcome to keep the eyes closed or you can keep the gaze soft, but just go ahead and straighten the legs. It doesn't matter if they're together or apart, just kind of let the feet flop open. And you might even start to feel the spine round a little bit, almost like you're just gently hugging the belly button into the spine. I'm just pausing here. So using that little bit of rounding in the spine to just kind of help you find a center. If you sit up really tall, it can be hard sometimes to stay a little bit more still. And if you kind of add a little bit of that counterweight on your sit bones, it can help you relax into the shape a little bit more. You don't always have to take my word for it. You can just feel and notice what's happening in your body and make those adjustments. The thing about yin yoga is it's not so much about the alignment and how the alignment looks, but it's really more about how the shape is feeling and what sensations are coming up. Just allowing your body and your breath to soften. Feeling as if the backs of your legs are gently melting into the floor. Few more rounds of breath here.
slowly just start to lengthen the spine. So feel as if there's a string at the top of your head and it's just gently starting to reach up to the sky. Just roll out your ankles. And roll them the other way. Wiggle the toes. It's okay for things to feel a little bit kind of more clickly and clackly right now with the weather getting colder and more consistently cold. It's also normal if you're feeling more tight or tender today than you did last month. So you can just keep your legs where they are as, if, as long as that feels okay. If not, change the position of the legs, but just allow the hands to rest somewhere on the legs. We're going to move the spine in a few different directions. So finding just a little bit of movement, a little less stillness for a few breaths, but really connecting your breath and your body. So just start to round the spine, hug the belly button in, just like we did a moment ago. But then this time I want you to find the opposite and just start to pull your heart forward. So moving through these cat cow positions with the spine rounding and flexing. And feel free to add any other movements that feel good. A couple more rounds of breath. And start to find your way back to a neutral spine. Again, taking any movement on your way there. And just start to bend your right leg. So almost like we're coming towards that half butterfly and keep your left leg out straight. And let's reach the arms all the way up to the sky. And then bring your hands down right in front of you. And just walk the hands like an inch or two forward. So walk them forward enough that you might start to even feel a little bit of sensation. And that sensation can happen at the back of the left leg, or maybe it's happening at the low back or the outer hips. Oftentimes what feels the tightest or the part of your body that needs the stretch the most is what's going to overtake the sensation. So it doesn't mean that the other parts aren't stretching. And then you'll just start to walk your hands a little bit over to the right. So maybe you're over the shin or a little bit closer to the knee. And you may even start to walk the hands a little bit further away from the body. And you can do that at any point as we hold. Or you might just stay where you begin.
You can keep your head and your neck in any position that feels comfortable for you this afternoon. Last few rounds of breath here. Just start to walk your hands back to the middle. Keep that little lean forward. Take a couple breaths here. And slowly start to lift yourself up. And you can extend both legs out long. You can even lean back and rock the knees a little bit from side to side. Whatever feels good to rinse that out. Hmm. And then start to bend your left leg or the other side. Goal is just to always do both sides. Doesn't matter where you start. And kind of take a moment to settle in. The sides probably feel a little different. And then let's reach the arms all the way up to the sky and bring your hands forward. And just walk them a couple steps forward. Doesn't matter how far that is. It can be an inch, it can be six inches, it can be a centimeter. And then start to walk your hands over towards the left. So over that bent leg. It doesn't matter how far you go.
You might be over the shin, you might be more over the knee. You might be leaning really forward or you might be a little more upright. Bringing yourself back to your body, back to your breath. little while longer here. You can always go a little deeper, pull it back a little bit. Relax the jaw and the shoulders. Last three rounds of breath here.
And start to walk your hands back to the middle, pausing in there. And slowly starting to bring yourself all the way up. And once again, taking whatever you want to kind of rinse out those half butterflies. You can move the legs, the upper body, the arms. <laughs> and then you'll meet with your legs crossed so still in a seated position just using this time to just pause just finding a comfortable seat reconnecting to your breath Releasing the shoulders and the jaw. Just one more breath here. And you'll start to take your legs out wide once again. And you're going to bend the right knee. But instead of bringing the sole of the foot towards the inside of the leg like we did last time, you're going to plant the foot on the floor and then bring the knee towards the inside of the leg. So you'll lift up on this right hip a little bit. Be really mindful of your knee. If you've got any knee stuff going on, I want you to like let your whole body come into it with you or don't even do it all the way if it bothers you. And I'll give you another option in a moment. So instead of doing that external rotation, with the leg, we're looking at internal rotation here. So we don't do this often, so it might take a little bit of wiggling to kind of find that comfortable place there. For me, when I bring my heel towards my butt a little bit more, it tends to be a little bit more comfortable. If the foot's out further, I feel like it's pulling on my knee a little bit more. But you kind of play with how close the knee is to the left, how far away. You can always bring a pillow underneath the knee. So that's one option to just keep it elevated and keep it lifted, but still having a little bit of internal rotation. So I want you to not feel like you're really having to sink onto the left side and see if you can find a place where you can sit a little bit more upright. It's okay if you're leaning a little bit, but a little bit more upright. And you can keep the left leg straight or bend the knee into that external rotation. So just like when we were in half butterfly. Sometimes I find that this is a little easier to hold because I've got more surface area. <laughs> But I really encourage you to play and be really mindful with the knees and this internal rotation on the right leg. Add pillows, blankets, props underneath one knee or both knees. I would basically just slide them right here and here. My dog is currently using all of them, so I can't grab them. <laughs> And it doesn't matter which way your torso is, you're gonna kind of find that sweet spot for it to pause. And then I encourage you to try to pause there.
you might bring a little bit of awareness to where the sensation is happening in your body the most here. And remembering that you're not judging or blaming any parts of your body for having that sensation. It's really just about noticing and observing. And you can always find a little bit of rounding with the spine. And these are all just options. Sending your breath to those places that you're feeling sensation and just encouraging them to release even just 1% more. a little while longer here. Last breath here. Yeah. And start to straighten your left leg if it was bent. And then leaning towards the left side tends to be the most comfortable way to bring the right leg back up. And you'll extend it out long.
Notice the difference on the sides. Just observe, be curious. And we'll start to do the same thing on the other side. So forget what happened because the sides will feel different. Always going into things really slowly, really mindfully. And you'll just start to bend the left leg and then allow the left knee to come towards the inside of the right leg. And again, on your way there, you can really lean into that right side. You're just creating more space for that leg to safely rotate. And play with where the foot is. You can add some support underneath the knee. And then again, decide where you want the right leg to be. If you want the knee bent or straight out in front of you. And because the legs relaxed, most likely it's pointing, the toes are pointing out. So it's in that external rotation that we're looking for. So we're still doing the same thing. It just looks a little different. So it doesn't matter if it's the same thing from side to side. And you can always sit up higher if you have something underneath your bottom or slide something underneath there. Those are also ways to support the shape. It doesn't matter where your torso lands. You can stay upright or around the spine. We often spend a lot of time stretching the outer hips and the inner legs and a lot of external rotation and a lot of fitness or active wellness modalities. And sometimes we don't realize that how much we actually also need to go the other way. So it's okay if you haven't done an internal rotation with the legs in a while and this is feeling like a lot. That's it's okay if it doesn't feel like much at all or anywhere in the middle.
Just a little while longer here. Sending your breath to any places that still feel like it's holding on. Last breath here. And you'll slowly unround your spine, straight in your right leg. Always as if you're moving in slow motion, really lean onto that right side so you can safely bring the left leg up. Any movement you need to rinse it out. And we're gonna start making our way onto our backs. So taking your time, there's no rush to get there. If you know you like props for Shavasana, we're not going there yet, but just have them nearby so you don't have to get up again. And when you do arrive on your back, you can take any movement when you first get there. And then just start to let the knees come into the chest. You can hold on to your pants. You can hold on to your, the tops of your knees, behind the knees. Feel like you're just trying to compress the belly even just a little bit. And also like you're trying to lengthen the low back. So almost think of it as like this upside down child's pose. Just a couple more breaths. We're not going to hold for too long because we kind of have to work a little bit here. And I don't want you to work too hard. And then just start to let the knees fall over to the right side. So just adding a little bit of a rotation and twist in the spine. And you can always have a pillow or a blanket underneath the knees or between the knees.
And then let the knees come back to the middle and drop them to the other side. Let the knees come all the way back to the middle. And then extend the legs out long. And you can take a full body stretch and reach the arms up overhead. And start to set yourself up for Shavasana. You can slide some pillows underneath the legs and the knees. Allow your arms to come by your side. And as we begin to settle in to our final resting pose, just start to bring awareness to the front of the hips. So we've done a lot with the outer hips, the inner hips, the lower back, the back hips. And we've really been constricting these hip flexors. So just as you start to bring awareness there, just notice if and how much you're holding on. And see if you can let go even just the tiniest bit. It could be really hard to release the hip flexors. And then bring awareness to those hip flexors again, if you've lost it, and see if you can let go and release even just a little bit. Just a little bit more than last time. And then one more time, bring that attention back to your hip flexors. And see if you can soften just a little bit more than last time.
And using these last few minutes of class in complete and total gratitude for your practice today. Shavasana. Starting to bring some awareness back into the space. Starting to bring some awareness back into the body. Wiggling your fingers and your toes. Rolling out wrists and ankles. and rocking your head from side to side. Using the strength of your arms and then rolling on to your side. And when you feel ready, you start to press yourself up into a comfortable seat and keeping the focus inside. Bringing your hands to your heart center, gently bowing the head. Thank yourself for making it to your mat today, for your practice, for your energy, for your breath, and most importantly, for yourself. Namaste. Hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.